First responders are searching along the Poudre River in the foothills of Larimer County tonight where flash flooding forced people to head for higher ground. The rain came down in the area of the Cameron Peak fire burn scar. The Larimer County Sheriff's Office says there's flash flooding in the areas around Buckhorn Road west of Fort Collins. The Sheriff's Office sent an emergency alert telling people in the Crystal Mountain and Wild Song areas to get to higher ground. Nine News reporter Luis De Leon is in Masonville where families are waiting to hear whether their homes are okay. Luis, what are you learning out there? Well, Kyle, Alex, for the last several hours, this was as close as we could get into the canyon that's right next to us here at the intersection of County Road 27 and Buckhorn Road. No more than 10 minutes ago, really, Larimer County Rangers just cleared this area and reopened the intersection. They told me that we can only go up as far as 44H into the canyon. So we're going to work to make our way over there uh, later on. We're still waiting on more official word from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office. But what we know so far right now is that just before around 6 o'clock, the Sheriff's Office said that there was dangerous flooding in the area of Crystal Mountain. They were urging people there to take higher ground. While we've been here the last several hours, we've seen several law enforcement vehicles rush into the canyon right next to us here. Meanwhile, families were waiting outside of the Masonville Mercantile right next to us. We caught up with one family who lives around 10 miles in. They could not get through for the last several hours. They lived through the High Peak Fire, or the High Park Fire, excuse me, the Cameron Peak Fire and other flooding events. They say this is usually where they post up to wait. Being aware, I mean, that's the one big thing is you know, you're moving up here and you're you're in nature and it has control. Like we said, we are still waiting on a more official word from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office. We will bring you those updates as we get them, Alex and Kyle. That is the right perspective. You're in nature. It is in control. Hopefully everybody in harm's way heeded those warnings today. Luis, thank you very much. The flash flood warning that was in place expired about an hour ago. Most of the showers now to the north of that area, but still lingering tonight. So we'll be monitoring it within that about hour and a half to two hour time span. Uh, that area picked up about an inch to two inches of water. Incredibly slow moving thunderstorms dumping so much water out there, and now the action has shifted off to the northeastern plains. Plenty of lightning, some heavy downpours, even some small hail. Also a possibility. We haven't seen much here around the Denver metro area. Maybe a couple of quick sprinkles, and that was about it for us. Still out to the western slope, I am tracking several more lines of thunderstorms. All of these continuing to take that kind of northeasterly track. So still keeping a close eye on Larimer County tonight. The flash flood watch has just expired at this 9 o'clock hour, which is nice to see, but we still have another hour to go with the flood watch in place for much of the western slope. I'll be keeping my eyes on this and the potential for seeing some more flash flooding as we look ahead toward the weekend, that seven day forecast, bring it back the heat in just a few minutes. Danielle, if you live in part of Larimer County with flash flood risk, or if you're up there for hiking, camping, rafting, the county asks that you consider signing up for flash flood alerts. People who are signed up for the county's opt in alert system will get messages when the danger is imminent, like they had have to head for higher ground right that moment. But there are more expansive uh, offerings as well. If you fl if you text the word flood 2022 to 888-777, you'll get texts every time that there is a chance of flash flooding. In less than an hour, eastbound I-70 is doing the one two shift. Washington Street will be closed I-270 starting at 10 through Monday morning. There will be a detour for drivers who are needing to go that way. This is the second to last lane shift for drivers, which will complete the Central 70 project. This is really one of the last big things that we need to do. Um, so traffic will switch onto eastbound I-70, and within the next couple of months, we're going to switch traffic on the westbound I-70 lanes and to its final configuration as well. And then you can basically consider I-70 complete. Eastbound I-70 will reopen at 5 in the morning Monday. CDOT expects the westbound lane closure sometime this fall. The older sister of one of the teenagers charged in a deadly arson is going to spend more than a, a decade in prison herself. Investigators looking into the fire discovered the sister's crimes by accident. Last year, investigators connected Tanya Bowie's younger brother, Kevin, two other teenagers to a fire at a home in Green Valley Ranch. That was the fire where five members of the Jol family died. Court documents said that investigators got a search warrant for Kevin's phone, which was registered to his sister, Tanya. And there, police say they found evidence tying not only the teenager to the fire, but also showing Tanya's involvement in some gun and drug sales. She pleaded guilty to those gun and drug charges back in February. Today, a federal court in Denver sentenced her to more than 10 years in prison. 
A father charged with trying to kill his five year old son pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity today. Michael Ninomia is facing multiple charges, including attempted murder and child abuse after his son fell through ice in January along the Cherry Creek Trail. His son suffered a head injury and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Now at the time, the boy's mother said she never thought Nino Mina would hurt their son. Nino Mina is being sent to a behavioral facility for evaluation and then he's due back in court in September. Every police officer in the small town of Springfield resigned this week. Two officers and a chief out the door. The town's mayor says the chief resigned for personal reasons, nothing sketchy, and the officers simply got other jobs at the same time. The Baca County Sheriff says his deputies will now start patrolling that town of 1400 while they try to help find some new people. The sheriff issued this message to anybody thinking it's a good time to go criming in Baca County. He wrote, quote, you're free to test that assumption at your convenience. However, we will warn you the community's fed up with it. Law enforcement will be here in force. They will exhaust every resource at their disposal in finding you. Sheriff continued, the lights are always on at the Baca County Jail and we still have a few bunks available. The Colorado Sun reports the town removed a previous chief for unprofessional behavior and settled claims against another officer for alleged misconduct toward a teenager. Our partners at KRDO in the Springs report that the sheriff's office investigated the Springfield Police Department earlier this year, but that investigation, they say, is not connected with the resignations. He spent a night alone lost up in the mountains. Not exactly what 14 year old Spencer Hallman had in mind for his first backpacking trip. Almost 24 hours later, rescue crews found him and brought him safely back to his family in Berthoud. Tonight, the teenager and his mom are sharing that incredible story. Here's Jennifer Meckles. A day after his rescue. I'm just tired. After a full night of sleep. Yeah. Spencer Hallman is still pretty exhausted from his unexpected night alone in the woods. Yeah. Absolutely. With mom Tammy's help, he shared a story. It was just a backpacking trip. It was a high adventure camp out. So they backpacked 6.2 6 miles in. A group of young campers and their leaders from Spencer's church left Monday for Rewa Wilderness. Wednesday afternoon. I was going to take a bath in the creek. You just went to the creek to wash up and then to come right back. But then what happened while you were at the creek? I took a wrong turn. A wrong turn turned into one very long night. Yeah, I slept for about an hour. His church leader said that he tried to flag the helicopters down, that he used his knife and was trying to ref do reflection off of the sun for the helicopter, but it must have been too wooded. I had trail mix and Gatorade. I was just scared. When something traumatic like this happens, we just turn to our faith and say, God has a plan. He's gonna show us the way and we go with it. The bugs bit him up pretty good, and he was very tired and thirsty. But when rescuers found Spencer Thursday afternoon, he was okay, even got a ride out of the mountains on horseback. I was just happy to be leaving the mountains. You feel a little numb at first, just kind of, I really didn't have a lot of emotion until I got the phone call that he was safe. And then it was like, okay, we're good. After all that, Spencer is ready to rest, and mom, she can exhale. I feel blessed. We're, you know, we're just grateful for his safe return. Spencer said the campers had just learned some survival skills the day before he got lost, and he remembered most of it, but had a few hard lessons in the woods as well. Larimer County had teams in the air, on the ground. They even had a dog out looking for Spencer this week. His church group was also part of that search effort. So, you know, he made it home. He's okay. <laughs> My God, poor kiddo. That is a mom's worst nightmare. I have to ask, would she let him do this again? We asked that question. She said yes. Ah, good mom. And good mom. <laughs> I think she, she learned a little like, something. No. <laughs> we also asked Spencer that question. He said yes, but not right away. So I think no, he needs a minute right. to take a break. <laughs> oh, bless his heart. He's like, I'm excited <laughs> to get out of those woods. Yeah. All right, Jenny, thank you.